The next keynote speaker is the Right Honourable Dr. Eduard Nigarante, the Prime Minister of Rwanda. Prime Minister. Your Excellency, Vice President of uh, the Republic of Zambia, Your Excellency, First Lady of the Federal, Rep Federal Democratic Republic of Ethiopia, Honourable Ministers, Director General of International Food Policy Research Institute, Assistant Director General of FAO, Chair, System Management Board, Conservative Group on International Agricultural Research, Distinguished Delegates, Ladies and Gentlemen, good afternoon. I am grateful to the leadership of the and the people of Thailand for hosting this important conference and for, for your warm hospitality. I also wish to thank the leadership of the Food Agriculture Organization and the International Food Policy Research Institute, IFUPRI, for having organized this global event. I'm pleased to participate in this platform one that seeks to address the burdens of hunger and malnutrition and their impact on human capital and economic development. This conference presents great opportunities for peer learning and, share, and sharing best practices on strategies of how to end hunger and malnutrition globally. It is also a time to share progress made on the, commit, on the commitment to ending hunger and undernutrition by the year 2025 and all forms of malnutrition by 2030. Progress has, made, has been noted in many parts of the world, but we still have a long way to go. The 2018 report on the state of food security and nutrition, and nutrition in the world indicates that the number of hungry people in the world increased to 821 million in the year 2017. In Africa, the same report indicates that prevalence of undernourishment affects more than two 256 million people, equivalent to 21% of the population. These findings are not different from the 2017 FAO report that shows that about 27.4% of Africans were considered severely food insecure, which is considerably higher compared to other regions of the world. To completely Eradicate, eradicate hunger and food insecurity, the African Union Agenda 2063 has made nutrition a top priority. This will be achieved by modernizing our agriculture systems. Distinguished delegates, let me share with you our Rwandan experience and the context. In Rwanda, we still have issues of hunger and malnutrition. However, we have made considerable steps toward resolving them. Rwanda aspires to attain middle income status by 2035, and the human capital development is crucial to attain this vision. Having a health and a productive population requires putting appropriate policies that fight hunger and malnutrition at the center stage. I would like to share some initiatives we have put in place in Rwanda, learning from best practices around the world, as well as our homegrown solution, tailored from our context. To name a few of these initiatives, the government of Rwanda is implementing the strategic plan for agricultural transformation, which is nutrition sensitive. It implements programs that aim at increasing the level of protein production and increase, and increase of micronutrient production. 
The crop intensification program aims at improving agricultural production, especially food crops. Through this program, we have noted a growing, noted a growing trend in food crop production at 8% annual average in 2017. Land consolidation and the soil erosion control has a great influence to the status of food security. More than one million hectares of land has been consolidated and agricultural input subsidized, subsidized to increase affordability and uptake. Investment in soil erosion control infrastructure have created employment opportunities for vulnerable household. Today, over 900,000 hectares of progressive terraces and more than 100 hectares of radical terraces were developed. Investment in irrigation scheme to increase food production. Presently, more than uh, 50,000 hectares of land used by small-scale farmers is irrigated as support mechanism to reduce the vulnerability to changing rainfall pat patterns. Excellencies, distinguished delegates, the above effort have yielded improvement in food security in Rwanda. The number of total food secure household increased. Consequently, food consumption has improved across the country compared to the situation three years ago. However, we still have an acceptable high level of malnutrition, current uh, malnutrition and stunting which is currently at the rate of 35% among children. This, this situation has attracted high level attention to put in place and implement policies and strategies that will holistically tackle the issue of malnutrition. Some of these strategies include an early childhood development program championed by an institution dedicated to coordinating all activities aimed at eliminating hunger and malnutrition. Multisectoral nutrition committees at central and local government level support this institution. Public-private partnerships have played a key role in increasing investment in the production of nutritious food. Today, we are managing a joint venture between the government of Rwanda and Africa Improved Food Company in producing baby nutrition food for vulnerable group, including babies between six and 24 months, as well as pregnant and lactant mothers from poor household. These fortified blended food are currently supplied over 14,000 women and more than 100,000 children in vulnerable categories. We developed a national multi-sectoral food and nutrition policy, which we implement in collaboration with development partners in a multi-sectoral approach to address stunting. We deployed around 58,000 community health workers in all villages to closely follow up malnutrition cases and contact, conduct awareness campaign on improved maternal infant and young children feeding practices. We established and supported one cow by poor family program since 20, 2006. Today, more than 300,000 cows have been distributed to poor families, and the target is to ensure every poor household owns a cow to produce milk for home consumption generate family revenues and the extra milk sold, and they produce manure that support food production for the family. Beside this program, the government also put emphasis on the promotion of small livestock, the planting of fruit, trees, and the school gardening programs. We also established a one cup of milk program and so far, over seven, 
The 7,000 school children in poor areas are enrolled in the program. Milk supply in school has not only improved the nutritional status, but also increased the school attendance. We developed a, a kitchen garden initiative for each family to encourage all Rwandans to have a garden of vegetables within their family compound. We established parents' evening forum at the village level through which local communities meet once a month and discuss, among others, issues of nutrition and, and the proper parenting. In order to increase graduation from poverty, Rwanda developed an integrated local development program that generates employment to poor people, especially in public works at community level, and offers direct support to other vulnerable groups, such as the elder to help to cope with shocks. Dealing with these malnutrition issues requires prioritizing care for expecting mothers and babies. It also requires the design and implementation of programs to ensure food security, adequate access to clean water supply, sanitation and hygiene. Ending hunger and malnutrition will therefore require concerted effort of everyone, including government, development partners, citizen, civil society organization, and researchers. This conference is therefore an opportunity to learn from each other while exploring the required intervention that can create a long lasting impact. And I'm looking forward to learning best practice from different experiences. I once again thank the leadership and the people of Thailand, the organizers of this conference, and all the participants here present. I thank you for your kind attention.